Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe. So glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today we'll get into some advanced study. But uh, before we get into the Word, I'd like to say a prayer. So please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I pray that you fill me with double the Holy Spirit today. And I thank you, Lord, for putting the scriptures together in the order that you want them read. And I pray it's your words that speak out of my mouth, not mine. And I pray that you give great understanding to all the people you draw to listen to this message. And I just thank you for everything and your will be done, not mine. I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Brothers and sisters, sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. Many of you may know this. It was all over the media that last night there was going to be a total eclipse where the earth goes in between the moon and the sun. And it's dark. And then there was going to be a moon. They called it the bloody moon. And we're going to read about that today, just briefly. So if you have your Bibles today, turn to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, brothers and sisters. So 2,000 years ago, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, prophesies that what event happened last night happened. The more important message here is those who call on the Lord, those who believe that Jesus the Son of God came incarnated in human form to die on a cross for you and me, for the sins of the world, and receive him in his heart, repents and serves him, obeys him, has him as their master, their teacher, their example, and obey him. It's just wonderful, brothers and sisters. We have so much to look forward to. So today we're going to continue reading in the same chapter. We'll read starting in verse 25 through 27. For David spoketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now this exact verse is found in Psalm sixteen nineteen. What we're reading is a sermon that Peter gives the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit falls on all those people and they start speaking in tongues, in languages of people that had came for the celebration of Pentecost throughout the world. And so he tells them that when David speaks about not being left in hell, he's not talking about David, but through the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, He's talking about Jesus and how Jesus did not see corruption and was not left in hell. That's what the word says. And the word is truthful. It doesn't lie. Verse 31 reads, He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, Neither his flesh did see corruption. Man, man, conquered the grave and gave us something to look forward to, brothers and sisters. Do you understand? 
The Old Covenant doesn't speak of heavenly mansions, being with our Lord and Savior forever in the kingdom of heaven. doesn't speak of being tormented in hell. Not till God Almighty gives up on the Israelites, divorces them, and for 400 years, he's not with them. And instead of deciding to destroy the earth and mankind out of his love for mankind, you and me and everyone ever born, he sends his only begotten son to die on a cross to be the sacrificial lamb once and for all. It's amazing love. It's amazing grace. We're so grateful. Amen? Amen. So now, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 16. I'm going to read a true story. Some people think this is a parable. Anytime there's a parable, there's no names mentioned. Do you understand? But here we have a name mentioned. So it's not a parable. It's truth. It happened. Starting reading in verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels unto Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now this is significant. What's significant here is that Lazarus in his torment, when he's being tormented, He's ready to accept Jesus. He's ready to accept Yeshua. But before that, he's not listening to anyone that's talking about God Almighty. Back then, when he died, Yeshua wasn't on the earth, had not died, had not died for the sins of the world yet. So we're going to read a little bit about that. So turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 
reading two through four. And this is Paul speaking and being as humble as he can because he's speaking about himself, but he doesn't want to brag. But he wants to tell the truth of what happened. And he reads, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Now remember, Jesus, when he's on the cross and he preaches to the two thieves on the left and the right of him, one of them receives him in his heart and believes in him. And Jesus tells him, you will be with me in paradise. You see? So brothers and sisters, if you're saved today, that's where you will go. When God comes for his virgin church, and brothers and sisters, he's coming in our generation, so be ready. Be ready to meet your Lord with the oil, with the Holy Spirit in you. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you're not going with him. To where? To paradise. To the paradise of heaven. Amen? Amen. So one more. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. We'll read verses 18 and 19. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, brothers and sisters, that was hell. Remember, we read that. David predicted that through the Holy Spirit, and it happened. Jesus died and went to hell and preached to all the people of old that didn't have the gospel. They didn't have the opportunity to accept Yeshua, to accept Jesus in their heart. And the ones that accepted him will be with our Lord and Savior in paradise, in the paradise of heaven, in the paradise of God. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, I hope that you are ready also to meet our Lord and Savior when he comes for his church and to be up there in paradise. And the virgin church, while they're there, are going to prepare for the wedding. And the ones that are left, it's going to be hell on earth, brothers and sisters. It's going to be a horrible, great tribulation and suffering, and death before the Lord day comes and he burns it all up with fire. But the Jews that are left in Israel, those are the wedding guests. And so while you and I and all the ones of the world that are saved and ready for our Lord when he comes to take the virgin church, God is going to give those people an opportunity in Israel, the remnant, to accept him as he gave the people of old an opportunity, a last chance to accept him in their heart. So brothers and sisters, all good things happen to those who love the Lord. Amen. Amen.